Carhartt has been the unofficial uniform of America's blue-collar workforce since 1889, and it still is. The Detroit born and raised brand cut its teeth outfitting railroad workers with bib overalls. As it expanded, laborers from farmers to carpenters and construction workers started wearing the rugged clothing. But Carhartt isn't just some legacy brand. Once the hip-hop community adopted the workwear style, Carhartt became a pop culture icon. When you are wearing something or you believe something is the best, um, rappers tend to let you know that, and they kind of change culture for a while. Today, it's almost impossible to walk around any major city from Brooklyn and Los Angeles to Tokyo and London without seeing the Carhartt logo on coats, t-shirts, and jackets. But the Carhartt watch cap is by far its most popular. Carhartt sells about 4 million of them a year. The original A18 cap was actually a promotional cap that they created, and it just caught fire. A wide range of celebrities, from Jamie Foxx, Kanye West, Rihanna, Bella Hadid, and Drake, all wear Carhartt gear. The company says it has never sought out that kind of attention. In fact, fast fashion and the fleeting exposure that comes with it is antithetical to its mantra, outworking the mall since 1889. Here's how Carhartt built America's favorite blue collar brand and became a modern day fashion icon. This is Suddenly Obsessed. In 1889, Hamilton Carhartt opened a small workshop in Dearborn, Michigan. With two sewing machines and five workers, he began outfitting America's working class in thick canvas jackets and bib overalls. By World War II, Carhartt became a household name due to its combination of durability and affordability. We absolutely focus first and foremost on, it's gotta function, it's gotta work in conditions that are typically harder than most. Traditionally, people have thought about Card as the, the brand for construction workers, farmers, tradespeople. But as we've developed the brand and built a, a bigger audience, more and more people are really becoming aware of it for the first time, and they're becoming more attracted to what we have to offer. In 2019, Carhartt generated over $1 billion in revenue and is still owned by the Valade family. The Carhartt watch cap has been its most popular product since 1987, followed by the jacket called the Hooded Active Jack and the Workwear Pocket Tee. Carhartt didn't mean to become a streetwear staple. You know, as we were adopted and have been adopted by the mainstream, we don't chase that. And it's amazing by staying consistent and committed and authentic, how many people continue to come back. Cultural folklore goes that in the 1980s, Carhartt became popular with drug dealers who wanted inconspicuous yet warm cold weather gear. Carhartt expert and author Gary Warnett summed it up saying, quote, the grit of criminal life necessitated affordable outerwear, and Carhartt's work jacket offered a certain anonymity. As Carhartt became a symbol of street culture, hip hop artists began wearing it in music videos and on stage. The idea of outworking other people is very much, of, I think, of a hip hop sensibility. That's the reason why I feel as though Carhartt and hip hop can be so connected, is because that's the same thing that they could be wearing if they weren't famous. Same as Run DMC and their shell tops and their tracksuits. They didn't get famous and then just start wearing those clothing or tango hats. That was what they used to wear when they were on the block and they brought it to mainstream. In 1992, hip hop label Tommy Boy Records sent 800 Tommy Boy embroidered Carhartt Detroit duck jackets to tastemakers as a marketing ploy. That was definitely an inflection point in the brand, uh, gaining mainstream notoriety and, and quite honestly, you know, uh, visibility and, and had a lasting impact on its connection to culture. Those Tommy Boy jackets are selling for up to $3,700 on the resale market. A 1992 New York Times article said that the Carhartt jacket became a fashion accessory for rappers, club kids, preppy hang oners, and the otherwise chronically cool. Blue collar workers gave Carhartt its authenticity. But the hip hop community, they made Carhartt cool. There's been no pretension of trying to say, we understand the hip hop consumer and we're, we are gonna make products for them. They're, they're just, because they make a great product, people wanna buy it. The world of high fashion was taking notice. In 1989, two Swiss designers, Edwin and Salom Fe, struck a licensing deal with Carhartt to create a tailored line of clothing called Work in Progress, featuring slimmer fits and a streetwear aesthetic. 
part, WIP was created, you know, 30, 30 years ago during the time when hip hop and rappers were really starting to adopt our product. Skaters were adopting our product. It's a sort of a symbiotic relationship. You know, uh, the more we stay solid and authentic as Carhartt, the, the easier and better it is for Carhartt WIP to expand. To be sure, Work in Progress and Carhartt are two separate entities. While Work in Progress's clothing uses Carhartt's basic design and branding, it's more expensive than traditional Carhartt gear and made from different materials. They knew their core consumer was the Carhartt consumer, but then they also recognized that this um, hybrid existed where streetwear and hype culture can then mix with the aesthetic that Carhartt brings to the table. It's taking the core Carhartt product and just giving it a little twist. It's not explicitly streetwear, like giant logos and look at me kind of thing. The color sensibility, the material sensibility ties back to the core product. The logo obviously, again, brings them authenticity. When it comes to Carhartt work in progress, it's a lot more sleek. It continues that box fitting, but it has a lot lighter material which is very interesting when it comes to the price range being higher when you're buying things that are a little bit thinner, but that's a part of fashion. That's how it goes. Sometimes they'll take the fabric and up the construction of the fabric so that it's a finer weave or a softer hand. They'll change the linings insulation in order to warrant that value at that higher price. Well, Work in Progress has collaborated with streetwear giants like Supreme and Stussy. People like Jalen are willing to pay top dollar for Work in Progress because of what Carhartt represents. I enjoy how Carhartt symbolizes hard work and a work ethic that also links with my people, and that's why it inspires me. Carhartt has been extremely careful to differentiate the core brand from Work in Progress. Whether it's Carhartt or Carhartt WIP, we still require the same standards to be met around fabric strength, around durability, around zippers and snaps. It's about taking that standard and then understanding what they're trying to address in the market. While work in progress satisfies the hype beast's desire to stay on top of the latest trends, Carhartt's legacy makes it appealing to a widening array of consumers even with a shrinking working class in an increasingly service-based economy. The foundation of the brand is, is about that hardworking grit. It's about the commonalities and the bonds that, that, that are forged by, you know, the, the, the honest hard day's work. You know, we've joked before, you know, some of us come from athletic industry backgrounds. You know, we now get to celebrate, showcase, feature, and champion the men and women who build the stadiums, not the ones who play in them.